I have been thinking for a while that I would make a big robot. So definitely I must have a large servo motor to make it, right? With that in mind, when I searched on online to buy a servo motor, I saw that the price was skyrocketing. But we all know that the most used servo motor in our daily necessities is SG90. This model also has a metallic version of it. You may also have seen slightly larger servo motors which are of nylon gear and maybe of metallic gear. And the price of such servo motor tend to be somewhat within our budget, right? But here you know I need a big servo motor. So I don't want to spend that too much money to buy a such a big servo motor at all. So in today's video I will try to figure out how to make a very big servo motor at a very low cost which will be really powerful and maybe which can play a significant role in your hobby robotics project. Ok, don't waste any more time, let's find out how I made this servo motor. If you think you can make this servo motor with Arduino and HBCIC, then you can make. But our goal is to make it at a very low price. That is why I choose Atmega 8 IC here, which is very low in price. And with this guideline in my mind, I start making a circuit diagram. And you know guys, I want to make a big robot of it. So as usual, I want to see it in a professional state. So I thought of converting to it into a PCB. So definitely I will upload this PCB scarab file to JLCPCB's company and it is the largest PCB manufacturer company in the world and those will make my PCB very careful at a very low price. Also I can choose my favorite PCB color here for absolutely free. Even you will also find interesting gift and ease PCB boxes. So without wasting any more time I ordered PCB from at JLCPCB company. This is the gear motor. With this I want to make a servo motor. I found this from an old Xerox machine which is really very powerful. Ok, let's test it once to see how powerful it is. With that in my mind, I screwed it into a corner of a table and then I will use a 15 ampere transformer which will weigh about 10 kg which will be used here as a weight object. I will then connect a copper wire with this gear output shaft and the other end of this wire I connected the transformer and see. Whenever I turn on this gear motor, it pulled my transformer very easily, which is really amazing, right? So I hope this much power is enough for me. I hope there is more power in this gear motor. And in the next episode, you will see here how to create a large solar panel tracking with this gear setup. About 10 days later, I got a PCB that I ordered. And see, this is the PCB box. And as soon as I opened the box, I saw a wonderful PCB key ring, which is really unique, right? Here I ordered 20 PCBs because this servo board will be used for a different purpose. See this PCB has two parts which are to be used in the next project which is the solar tracking system. But in today's video only we will know about servo. That is why I will just break the part of servo from this PCB. To make it proper way I will gather all the components that I need here to make it. Ok guys let's make it. You will find the garbage file of the PCB in the description box as you always have. And if you want you can also get the PDF layout in the description box. As a result, you can create PCBs in the itching method. It is really easy to make. I am pretty sure you may be wondering what is the difference between Atmega 328P and Atmega 8 IC, right? It is very simple. Atmega 328P and Atmega 8 are almost all similar. Even the pinout is also same. Atmega 8 has the advantage of USB interface, Atmega 328P does not have the USB interface. And the biggest difference between Atmega 328P and Atmega 8 is that Atmega 8 has 8KB memory while 328P has 32KB memory. 8K memory is enough for my project, so that is why I choose Atmega 8. Ok, you can see guys, my PCB is almost done. Let's check it out. Now is the time to program this Atmega 8 IC, so that is why I will open the Arduino ID software. And next I will program this IC through my homemade ISP AVR programmer. Code download link you will find in the description box. Once the program is done, next I will mount this IC in this servo board. And you are done. To create a servo motor, you must first understand the angle at the where your output shaft is. So I have to use a potentiometer here to select it. So that is why I start creating a some design here in Fusion 360 software, which is pinned on a 3D printer, which is why I can mount this potentiometer correctly with the output shaft. Then I will attach the potentiometer to the gear frame with a screw. Ok guys, you can see it is properly connected to the output shaft. Now this potentiometer will act as a PID value. So as a result, what is the degree of angle of output shaft? So the microcontroller will be understand its analog value. And by reading the value, it will provide the suitable digital write signal for the motor. 
and here also I made a servo horn by my 3D printer. So as a result, I could observe the output shaft right angle. Next for the control the servo motor here, I will use a servo tester. Then I will connect the DC 12 volt in this servo board. And next I connect the input signal to the servo tester. And see my servo is turned on. Now whenever I turn the potentiometer of my servo tester, see my servo horn is rotated at the right angle. That means my servo is working properly without any problem with a good accuracy. And hopefully you can understand my servo motor is working like a commercial one. So I am pretty sure this is not a difficult task to make a servo motor. If you want to create your own, you will find all the information in the description box. This was today's short video. I don't know how you like this video. If you like this video, please like this video and don't forget to subscribe my channel. See you again in the another video. Stay well and stay healthy.